It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And I am with Alex, Hannah, and Greg in Pacific Beach. And Ava. And Ava. <laughs> and we are going to be blowing out this flower bed. And I'm going to be installing a little succulent coral reef slash tapestry um, fabulous thing here. Super exciting. This agave blue flame is going to be coming out and rehomed um, used to be there was a line of them like over here at the neighbors uh, but these all died <laughs> so now they just have the one and you know this is fine and it's pretty and very modern and clean clean but these people want something special uh, they want a tapestry so we are in the process of moving these black river rock over into the parking strip and I'm going to be working some of them into the end of the design, you know, for cohesion. Uh, but we clearly don't need all of these. So we have stockpiled. We've got plants. We've got soil for mounding. We've got mini boulders, driftwood, and a bunch more plants. So, yeah, we are going to have some fun with this today. Okay, so we have almost got all of the Mexican beach pebble off the top of this, ripped up the weed fabric and exposed the existing irrigation, which is basically just a, a hard line with little emitters popped in like right here. See that? Yeah, just little emitters popped into the hard line. Because remember, they just had a row of agaves here. But what we're going to be doing is a mounded tapestry. So Greg is going to take this out and replace it with our subterranean drip, which is very, very similar to this, except it has built-in emitters every few inches all the way down the tube. So he's going to run a couple of lines, and that should support our new design really, really well this close to the coast on the beach in Pacific Beach. Okay, so we disengaged the old um, drip irrigation and Greg is installing a barbed connector into this so the, the output. Into. Uh, the, this elbow uh, is attached to a pop-up. The riser. To the, the riser, top. rather. And so now he's attaching this so that he can then attach our subterranean drip directly to that. And that will be the port for our new irrigation system. Then he's going to run this line here. He's going to give me three lines. And that will be what we will utilize to irrigate our new installation. Putting a T here. Putting a T on there so that he can run the tubing both directions. And then Greg just builds out the irrigation to suit whatever space he happens to be working in. So basically the the lines gonna have one line in the back. It's gonna come curve around, come through the middle. And uh, around to the front. Cool. All right. Okay, so uh, also part of my process, since this is a small space, I'm starting with my money. This is slightly left of center. This is where I want the majority of the height in my installation. So I dropped four bags. Yeah, four bags of three cubic foot uh, Kellogg's garden soil. I like this because it comes in a three cubic foot bag. It's a lot. I, not, this wasn't enough of a space to bring in bulk soil. And whenever I have a small space like this, I will use the bagged. So 
Uh, we also have all of our canned dirt to think about that's going to have to be worked in. So I'm going to start here and then I'm just going to move down as I go creating the undulations as I see fit. But I think it's important to figure out where you're going to start. Now when Greg installs these lines, we will manipulate the irrigation line accordingly to accommodate all of our dips, hills, valleys, and swales. Okay, well, we're getting going on the planting. I have sent Greg for more soil. I underestimated how much I would need and I need more. So I'm just focusing on this area right here. Uh, you can, you know, I don't know if you can tell or not from the video, but it, it does this. Woo, and then down, and then it'll go up again over here. It's ziggy and zaggy. I was just talking to the client about um, trying to explain my process with the plants too. Because you know, when you bring in this many plants into a small space, the concern is how do you manage it? And I was telling him, you know, once a year I'll come in and do what I do, which is to, you know, um, dig plants up that have gotten too big, cut off, cut them off and reset them as and when needed. Um, it's funny how people's eyes roll back when I start talking about how to prune succulents. So I told him, just don't worry, and uh, you'll see what I mean next year when I come in to do the maintenance. So the idea is, you know, that I have planted things specifically because I do know how they're going to grow and how they're going to mature. Now, like this pup off of our mama um, blue flame, you know, this clearly is the potential of this plant but I planted this as a cutting so it's going to take it a hot minute to re-establish a root system before it can even think about getting any bigger then when this thing gets starts to get too big um, I will put something else there most likely this is not a plant that I'm exactly going to be able to make smaller but I promised them that I wouldn't bring in anything too big or too mature for this tiny little space so you know, I am working with a lot of plants, literally hundreds of plants, and I still have some little mini boulders left. I'm really happy that I didn't underestimate on my rock because I still want to come in from behind too and shore up some places, do a little dry stacking. You can go as high as you want with your mounding as long as you're prepared to tuck boulders in to keep your top dressing rock from sliding off onto the ground. So, Oh, Hanny, I just noticed that the welcome sign, the shadow, it's hitting the wall. It says welcome, yeah. And it says welcome. That's really cool. And this trigona is too low. I am going to um, mound that more. I want to see that up, you know, about this high. So I will put a bunch of dirt right here and stage it so I can get another six to eight inches of height right out of the gate. All right, so we have wrapped for today. I have, with Hannah and Alex and Greg's help, we have completed the removal of all of the pebbles, the laying down of the soil, the application of the rocks, which I nailed. I used every one. And, of course, the driftwood and all of the planting. The only thing left now is my finish work which will happen tomorrow. And you'll need to be sure and tune in to see what we choose to use as top dressing in this beautiful little coral reef installation. Also, I encourage the clients to consider some gutter gardens on this black fence in the future. I think that would just be the absolute um, bee's knees, right? That would just be the best. So I want to wish you all a very, very happy Valentine's Day. This is the month of love. Be sure and get your Love is in the Garden merch at the store. Thank you all that have already purchased for your support, for your subscriptions, for your following, for your likes on this video, and for your fantastic comments. Love you guys so much, and we'll see you tomorrow.